Who should I vote for? This is the number one question that I've been getting from all of our followers and clients over the past couple of weeks. So I wanna do this quick video to break down for you the two different differences or the two different policies, I guess, primarily outlined by the two major parties and talk to you about this number, 154. Why this number is so important. And really, the only thing that you need to know is about this number and this will actually have you decide which way you're gonna vote in this election. So before we get stuck into it, g'day guys, my name is Tim Guest. I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the managing director of Infinite Wealth. I've trained over 18,000 everyday hardworking Australians, people just like you, how to reach their financial goals, whether they be things like home ownership, travel and lifestyle, or early retirement, using only what they currently have available to them right now. Now, of course, it's the first time you're tuning in. Um, you know, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or one of those channels there, you wanna make sure you click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. And of course, if if you're a long time follower, then welcome back. And of course, we love to see your guys' uh, interaction with our videos. So please like, love, angry waves, you know, depending on which platform you're watching this on. And of course, the last thing we always ask is please share this information with your friends and family. Of course, if you guys reach your goals, it's not gonna be much fun if you not, haven't got anyone to hang out with. So you want your friends and family to be joining you as well. Uh, but like I said today, today's Just Ask Tim video series, we're primarily focusing on, on, focusing on who you should be voting for today. And that thing that I said right at the start of this video, 154, how this is the important number and ultimately this number is what's really gonna, or what really should be the factor in um, which way that you're gonna be voting this election. So 154, let me tell you exactly what I mean by that number. $154 billion. There's 154 with nine zeros after it. This is a really important figure and the figure that's, you know, it should really be uh, the factor which is influencing which way you're gonna vote. Uh, come Saturday. Now, what is this $154 billion? Well, that is essentially the, uh, the additional taxes that the Labor government is going to be slugging uh, uh, Australians, okay? Now, primarily my question is this, is if you think based on where the Australian economy is current posi currently positioned, if you think slugging Australians with an additional $154 billion worth of additional taxes is a good idea, then you should be voting Labor. Okay, and if you think slugging Australians an extra $154 billion worth of additional tax is a bad idea, uh, then you should be voting uh, a Liberal, okay? So I'll kind of break it down. So essentially these are the additional taxes that Labor want to um, impose on Australians. Now primarily where those are gonna be coming from is it's gonna be coming from housing, okay? So we're talking negative gearing, uh, also closely tied to that is the capital gains discount, which will uh, impact investors on all different forms of assets, okay? Ultimately, what we're gonna see is that's gonna create a lot of uncertainty in the property markets, but primarily the biggest thing that we're, we're worried about is uh, the higher rents that that is gonna impose. Um, so the biggest thing that we're, we're looking on is you know enabling people to actually get into the market, um, you gotta get out of the rent trap, and if you gotta get out of the rent trap, it's gonna be very hard to do that if, um, if if your rent's going up, okay? Um, so also retiree tax, okay? So taxes on superannuation, this is also where they're gonna be getting those additional taxes from. Uh, taxes on business through um, the, the policy changes they wanna make with, with regards to trust, which primarily affects family trust, which are small businesses. Um, also the uh, reductions to what you can claim when it comes to accounting deductions. The fifth area is, uh, is additional taxes on multinationals, which I am a massive, massive fan on. I think primarily we should be going after these large multinationals who are pushing you know billions and billions of dollars of revenue offshore and avoiding tax. However, Labor really only think that there's gonna be $2.3 billion. Out of that $154 billion, only 2.3 is gonna be coming from multinationals. The rest is gonna be coming from hardworking everyday Australians, primarily middle income earners, okay? So, um, I mean, I'm sure you can guess my view on that and what I think about that. But look, of course, with this $154 billion, Labor plan to spend it, okay? So the primary areas they're gonna be spending it is in uh, uh, hospitals, um, childcare, dental. Um, so a couple of things, uh, childcare. So they wanna make um, childcare free for people or families earning under $69,000. Uh, also reduce the costs uh, for people earning under 174 combined. Um, that's opposed to coalition who have already got their childcare uh, rebate policy in place. They're not looking at making any changes to that. Uh, Labor also wanna make sure that three-year-olds can get into pro pro uh, preschool, whereas it's currently four-year-olds. Okay, so they're funding that as well. They're also aiming some additional funding for domestic violence, although the late Liberal government has proposed quite a lot of policies with around domestic violence. Um, look, you know, um, a lot of it going into like $2.3 billion worth of extra cancer, 
um, basically uh, in dental allowances for pensioners. Um, probably one of the big things where uh, Liberal, they're not spending as much, I guess, on, on health as what um, Labor are. However, they are spending considerable more when it comes to transport and infrastructure upgrades. So $100 billion is what Liberal planning on spending on transport and infra infrastructure compared to Labor's only a billion dollars. So there's a, a big difference primarily there. Um, um, however, there's also been a lot of um, criticism of the, the, the parliamentary costings which have come out, the $154 billion. Uh, Liberals are saying there's a lot of the policies that um, Labor have promised that haven't been included in there. So some of those include plans to increase New Start, which could be $39 billion. It's hard to, um, hard to say. They're saying they want to increase it, but they're going to do um, have a, uh, a committee that looks into it after the election. So it, it depends on what the committee comes back to, but the estimates are $39 billion. The foreign aid, like Labor also wants to significantly increase foreign aid. Um, that has been included in those parliamentary costings, and that could be anywhere from 60 to $82 billion. That's a huge um, cost factor not um, included in those. Um, also, La uh, Labor want to double the refugee intake, which would put an extra $6.2 billion, um, another $36 billion for science, things like that, okay? The other thing, major thing is their climate policy. So, you know, here, Liberal um, have... Um, have they have every plan to meet their Paris agreements? Um, a liberal, uh, sorry, Labor want to significantly um, increase or significantly uh, increase the amount of reductions. Um, so they, they, but they won't provide any costings to that, which is something that I really find very, very strange. They're going to the election with a major policy, but they won't provide any costings around it whatsoever, which um, which really does worry me. There has been some independent costings, which um, indicated this could have a 200 to 500 billion dollar hit to the economy. It could effectively um, reduce wages by 8%, increase energy prices by um, 20 to 50%, and cost the economy 337,000 jobs. So very, very worried about Lima, uh, Labor's climate policy. I mean, look, I think it's um, it, it's one of the primary um, priorities that we need to face as a country is dealing with our climate. However, you know, putting your bold, brash plans out there with, without costing and, and you know, um, effectively managing the economy as well as reducing our, our reductions is... Um, uh, I would say uh, very, very unwise. So look, I mean, primarily the people that are following us are ambitious people who are investors. You wanna be ambitious, you wanna invest, you've really gotta be voting with Liberal. Uh, keep in mind that if you vote Labor, if you vote Greens or you vote Independent, then um, the, the risk that you have, so, I mean, Greens preferences all go to Labor. Independent preferences, the risk that you've got is their, their preferences could go to Labor as well, and you could risk that Labor government, which have got those you know, $154 billion in the economy. I think that's a very, very, very bad idea. Um, personally, this election, I'll be uh, voting Labor, um, and uh, I'll be making sure that I do everything that I possibly can to put Labor last, just because um, I think that these... Uh, uh, policies primarily hit middle income earners the most. I mean, you know, two thirds of people at negative gear earn under eighty thousand dollars. So, you know, that's not hitting the top end of town like Labor would like you to think. They're going after the top end of town. No, who they're actually going after is middle income earners. Um, you know, retirees who've worked their guts out their entire life, and you're going to take away the tax that they deserve to get back. Um, grossly unfair policy. Uh, then, of course, making it harder for businesses. I mean, if people want jobs, if people want their wages to go up, you have to make sure that their businesses are doing well. Um, and uh, and going after business like Labor is going to uh, is is proposing to do in this uh, election, uh, I think would be very damaging to people's wages and people's jobs, um, um, guys. So I think that pretty much breaks it down. Look, like I said, the, I think really the, the, it comes down to one question: Do you think that uh, adding an additional 154 billion dollars in taxes to the uh, of Australia of the Australian population is a good idea considering our current economic climate? Um, if you think yes, vote Labor. If you think no, vote Liberal. I'll be voting Liberal. Guys, that pretty much covers it off for the Just Ask Tim video today, okay? So, um, look, just a quick reminder as well, please interact with the video, please share the video with your friends and family. If you've got a question for me, um, this election business will all be over next week, right? So hit us up on one of the social media channels, at Infinite Wealth AU or at Tim Guest AU, and I will be, uh, uh, yeah, so the bearded CEO voting Liberal, is that a question? Uh, yes, 100% I'll be voting Liberal. Uh, there is no way I'm going to support a government who proposes to increase taxes by $154 billion, primarily on middle income earners. Um, absolutely no way I support that kind of policy. Um, I think uh, Labor have gotten cocky um, and they could have run a very vanilla um, uh, campaign which would have you know, handed them a, 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 you know, a whitewash in the election, would have absolutely drilled Liberal, but they've gotten cocky. 
Um, and um, and yeah, I think uh, their cockiness is going to cost them. But guys, that's perfect. That's it from me. Glad you guys are giving me the thumbs up and the waves. Glad you guys agree with me. Uh, agree 100. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so thanks a lot for following. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Like I said, please interact. Please share uh, and send us through your questions for the next Just Ask Tim video series. Have a great uh, rest of your week, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.